Tom. I'm sending you the documents in a little bit, okay? Yeah, I'm just at the deceased artist's house right now. I have to categorize and archive a bunch of her art pieces and price them. But get this. No. A bunch of this stuff is like really sexual and creepy. I'm gonna send you pictures to prove it, okay? Your sense of humor is illegal! You're so dark! Okay, okay. I'll talk to you later and I'll send you the documents. And I'll send you the pictures too. Okay, bye. Bye! <laughs> bye. are listening to this then I must be dead. There are some things that I need to come clean about. I had no idea the rules I made about elemental weaknesses, inherent temperament and power levels would be taken as law, but I should have known. There are deep implications in treating living beings like this. There's a bad history. While a corporate lawyer goes through my precious found and made items, I will tell you about the dark history of collections and cabinet of curiosities, and what I'm now calling digital cabinet of curiosities. Digital inventories, think Pokemon and Neopets. They are a collection of fictional objects, creatures, or beings displayed and categorized by their features and attributes. The function of them is to be able to easily compare one object from the other, and to be able to see all of your possessions in one place. But why do we do this? To understand digital inventories, the categorization of rare items, and even fictional races, we need to go back to the 16th century and the time of the Enlightenment. How do we go from Cabinet of Curiosities to Sexy Monster Girl encyclopedias? What? I'm going to gear up my time machine, say a Hebrew prayer, and we will do some education. Some say my school is better than university, and I reply thank you. It's hard to run a school from the dead, so I'm trying my best. At the end of this video series, I will give you a diploma to show your family. Here we go! Yehi Ratzon, Milfanecha, Adonai Eloheinu, Velohe Avoteinu, Shetolecheinu, Neshalom. Wow, we are in England in the 16th century. You either look like this, this or this? Just kidding, I am reputable, see? England sucked and was colonizing everywhere, stealing stuff and shipping humans as slaves and exotic animals around the world to drown in shipwrecks. So-called marvels from the east, which were objects, plants, and drawings, were traded or taken from colonies and are now circulating around Europe natural items that could be studied and sold, such as rare colored shells and exotic plants, could be used to trade for real estate property. Writings and drawings are being circulated about these objects, giving them lore and reputation. To demonstrate to a lady that you were a worldly man, you might court her by showing her your collection of notable exotic objects. Whoa. You might be like, If we get married, we can combine our collection of stolen knickknacks and everybody will be so jealous! Although the Cabinet of Curiosities or Room of Wonders was invented by the Germans a little earlier, they really took off during the 16th century in England. This was a pastime only for the elite and wealthy. Cabinet of Curiosities were essentially a room or a piece of furniture containing special collected objects. In a Cabinet of Curiosity, one could find dried, rare plants, 
geological fossils, paintings, religious relics, and more, but sometimes the objects were faked. Around this time, there are strong breaks from the church happening, and people are starting to reject immaterial things and spirituality. Sorry, ghost girls. And laying value only on what one could directly experience through their senses. Mushroom girls. Mm. Okay, let's take a break. Have you ever read the book I Spy? You have 20 seconds to find all five hidden acorns. Go. I want to have something like listener mail that I can read at the end of videos for fun. If you want to email me something cool, you could reach me at thebropercent at gmail.com. I'll make a fan art of the coolest email. Let's talk about rareness. Everybody values different things as rare, but there are pretty quantifiable standards to rareness. A gamer computer is expensive. Helium on Earth is rare, and the original copy of Anne Frank's diary is invaluable. Everything that is considered rare is constructed as such by humans and is relative to our use of it. Although access to helium balloons is easy enough to acquire, helium is relatively short in supply on Earth and is a non-renewable resource. Anne Frank's diary is a historical relic and also a genius piece of literature. I love you, Anne. I guess I'll be seeing you in heaven. So how does this work with digital archives where pixels can be infinitely replicated? Can something be rare without scarcity? A game like Pokemon or Neopets will create a scarcity of cool items while also giving you a very clear understanding of how their fictional currency works. They will also make sure that rare items have narrative significance and sometimes a reward which creates lore around the object, making them double desirable, double de-desirable, just like in the real world where companies create a false scarcity of a desired item to increase people's interest and drive up the market value. Games will also provide you with ways to show off your rare items and creatures that you have collected and give you many opportunities to enrich your collection. Yeah, like Pikachu is wifey, but we want to capture all those big legendary boys, right? This is the end of this video because our class is over and now it's time for recess. You will see what happens on the next episode. Uh, definitely subscribe to me and give me likes. Hey, this is Maya. Uh, not the dead Maya. This is the present rat Maya. I wanted you to know me, the Maya that is not evil, that I have a Patreon and you should check it out. I give lots of cool bonus features in it and also there's a tier where you can commission me to make a sexy secret drawing for you. So check it out. Thanks for watching. This is an art piece I made while I was in school where I took electric angels and Jesuses and made uh, some sort of glowing shrine.